I'm getting on that macadamia nut train and I'm riding it all the way to Hawaii just so I can get off, shake a macadamia nut farmer's hand and say thank you. We like macadamia nuts because they're low carb. Okay, cool. And some of us like macadamia nuts because they're low omega-6 fats. Well, that's pretty cool too, but why aren't we talking about palmitoleic acid, omega-7s? I mean, when you look at the kind of cutting edge research, that's the one that I'm most excited about. So let's break down the superpower, the hidden superpower behind my favorite nut, the macadamia nut. Let's start with cardiovascular benefit. Okay, there was a study that was published in the journal Lipids. Okay, and this took a look at uh, individuals that had high levels of cholesterol. Okay, and they had them eat between one and a half ounces to three ounces of macadamia nuts per day for a few weeks. Well, they found that after four weeks, they had reductions in plasma inflammation as well as reduction in oxidative stress. So the mechanism is pretty interesting. Okay, we've seen that palmitoleic acid, omega-7s themselves, can have an effect on modulating the inflammation that is associated with the macrophages, the, you know, basically the immune system response, that can be connected to cardiovascular events and overall just cardiovascular health in the first place. So then when you look at more studies, there was a study that was published in Clinical and Experimental Pharmacology and Physiology okay, that looked at palmitoleic acid specifically. And it found that palmitoleic acid suppressed the genes that are associated with interleukin-6 and nuclear factor kappa B in macrophages. What does that mean? Okay, well, that means that palmitoleic acid seems to have an effect on the genes that are associated with the inflammatory response that could be responsible for just our cardiovascular health. I know this sounds a little bit redundant and kind of wild, but basically what it means is there is the potential for macadamia nuts to be very, very heart healthy when you look at the big picture. We know that tree nuts and monounsaturated fats have a lot of potential heart benefit, but now we're seeing some specific stuff with those omega-7s, which is really, really fascinating. Now, don't get the wrong idea. I'm not trying to say that macadamia nuts are going to you know, diagnose, cure, treat anything. I'm not a doctor. I'm some guy on the internet, and I'm very careful to tread lightly around that stuff. I just point out the research. But let's look at the metabolic side of things, because this is the part that I find the most intriguing. Now, when I say the metabolic side of things, I mean how macadamia nuts and omega-7s could be playing a role in carbohydrate metabolism and insulin sensitivity. Let's dive in. So first, there's a study that was published in the journal PLOS-1. Okay, this took a look at 12 different trials with over 450 different participants. Now, this was looking at just tree nuts as a whole but macadamia nuts were part of this. So they found that just 56 grams of tree nuts daily made a pretty serious dent in their fasting glucose levels, but also improved their HbA1c. Well, that's cool. We know that tree nuts, again, are you know, high in monounsaturated fats that can be good for a lot of different things. But what about macadamia nuts or palmitoleic acid specifically? So there's a study that took a look at what are called KKAY mice. KKAY mice are basically mice that have been genetically altered to become diabetic. So essentially, they're diabetic mice that have gotten there kind of artificially, but that's not the point. What they did is they gave these mice 300 milligrams per kilogram of palmitoleic acid every day for four weeks, okay? And they saw, once again, at the end of the study, there is an improvement in insulin sensitivity and a decrease in insulin resistance. And this is a big thing when you're talking about diabetic mice, right? Like when they're already diabetic and they're genetically made that way, to see an improvement with palmitoleic acid coming in, that's a really big deal. They also found that it prevented the development of hyperglycemia, which is pretty wild too, because in a you know, artificially diabetic mouse, it would make sense that they would become hyperglycemic very easily, right? So if we were able to prevent that or reduce that a little bit just with palmitoleic acid coming in, that's pretty wild. But again, that's a mice study, not a human study. So if we look at the human data, it's pretty interesting too, although the evidence is a little bit more bleak because it just hasn't completely been, I don't know, flushed out yet. Okay, so this study was published in the journal Diabetologia. Now, it took a look at 1,234 individuals that were non-diabetic, okay? And it took a look at a few different things. But three years later, after baseline, the main thing that they wanted to look at were their levels of palmitoleate. Now, palmitoleate is the circulating palmitoleic acid, basically. So, remember how I said our bodies can create palmitoleic acid? They can create these omega-7s? Well, this is kind of what they're measuring. And what they wanted to find here is, is there a correlation between the levels of palmitoleate that are in the body and insulin sensitivity? They found after three years, the people that had higher levels of palmitoleate 
ended up having better whole body insulin sensitivity. They also ended up seeing a negative association with insulin resistance and even cooler, they saw an improvement in beta cell function. Beta cells are the cells within the pancreas that produce insulin. So if we have an improvement in the function of those, we could potentially have an improvement in how our body utilizes insulin or produces insulin. Again, not saying it's going to cure, treat, fix anything, but the data is pretty awesome. Well, if we look at even that same mouse study that I mentioned earlier, we can see that there's a down regulation in genes that are associated with what are called adipocytokines. Okay, so adipocytokines are uh, what are released by fat cells that trigger inflammation. Okay, now there is a very strong correlation in other studies between adipocytokines and insulin resistance. So if we're essentially reducing the inflammation or modulating the inflammation that is associated with adipos, uh, adipocytes, like basically the inflammation that comes out of a fat cell, then maybe we can modulate how our body uses insulin and processes carbs. In that same study, we can also take a look at liver fat and how that works. Okay, there's a strong correlation, again, between the amount of fat that's in the liver and insulin resistance. So if we have less fat in the liver, we have less insulin resistance. Well, it turns out that palmitoleic acid plays a role in the genes that facilitate how much fat goes into the liver, things like SREB1. Okay, these are genes that are basically like people working on an old fashioned locomotive where they're shoveling coal into the engine, right? They're just shoveling the fat into the liver. So that's kind of how that process works. So if you down regulate like SREB1, you're slowing down how fat can accumulate in the liver, which can potentially have an indirect effect on fatty liver. But then there was a study that was published in diabetes that was really fascinating that took a look at beta cell function. Now, Full disclaimer, this was an in vitro study, so it was done, you know, petri dish style, but still very fascinating. They found that palmitoleic acid ended up making it so that beta cells would proliferate more. So proliferation of beta cells is a good thing because that means you have more cells that are producing insulin potentially. But it also found that it inhibited apoptosis. Now, beta cell apoptosis is when the beta cells in the pancreas die a little too soon. Okay, we don't want that to happen in this case. We want more beta cells for more insulin. But they also found within the same study that palmitoleic acid prevented sort of the impairment of beta cells that would come as a result of high levels of glucose. So normally when high levels of sugar glucose come in, it can negatively impact the beta cells. They kind of like, oh, whoa, I can't handle all of this. Well, it turns out the palmitoleic acid made it so that they could handle it a little bit more. Pretty interesting stuff. And today's video sponsor, by the way, is a very relevant sponsor. I want you to check out Royal Hawaiian Macadamia Nuts. Okay, they are my favorite macadamia nuts. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that Royal Hawaiian is standing behind any specific client or anything like that. They're just a relevant sponsor, and if you like macadamia nuts, definitely recommend you try them out. I love their wasabi flavor, I love their barbecue flavor, and even if you're not doing keto, I think that macadamia nuts are one of the best fats that you could have when you're not on keto as well. So make sure you check them out, and if you use that code down below, just Thomas, just the code Thomas, you can save 20% off of your order. And again, if you haven't tried the wasabi flavor, you gotta try those. They've got bunch of different ones. They've got organic that are just like totally unflavored and just simple. They've got sea salt. They've got just a bunch of different flavors. So that link is down below. Use code Thomas to save 20% off your Royal Hawaiian Macadamia Nut order. And a big thank you to Royal Hawaiian for sponsoring this video and making this content possible. So there's another avenue in which macadamia nuts could be playing a role in how our body processes carbs better. Okay. Now that comes from the same study that was mentioned earlier, the one that was published in Diabetologia. Now this one speculates that AMPK could be behind a lot of the main drivers for the benefits of palmitoleic acid, right? So AMPK is the energy sensor within the body. What that means is that when AMPK is up, the body starts tapping into our existing fuel sources. It taps into our existing fat. It taps into our existing carbohydrates. But as a result of that, it makes us very insulin sensitive, okay? So what it does is it allows what's called GLUT4 to translocate to the surface of a cell. So it expresses more GLUT4 in the skeletal muscle and in the adipocytes. What does that mean? It means that carbohydrates that you do have circulating or you do take in are much more likely to go to the right place. They're much more likely to go into the muscle cell and get stored as glycogen. This doesn't sound like much, but it can play a tremendous role in overall just managing glucose, okay? Being able to keep those levels stable and being able to allow it so we're not having such a load on the pancreas, thereby making it so insulin sensitivity improves.
People also fail to mention that AMPK could be playing a big role in fatty liver as well. Okay? AMPK, like if we get into a fasted state or if we train in a fasted state and we drive up AMPK, that can be very, very good for hepatic liver content as well. And then there's one other really interesting study that I want to reference, and I want to make sure that I lay a full disclaimer on this. I'm not saying that palmitoleic acid is going to encourage you to burn fat. Okay, Don't get me wrong, but this science is really interesting. This one was published in Diabetes, Metabolic Syndrome, and Obesity, and it took a look at sheep, yes, sheep, and it gave them a direct IV infusion of palmitoleic acid. And this is pretty fascinating because what they found is that the sheep that were infused with palmitoleic acid had 77% less weight gain than the control group. Really, really wild stuff. But when they looked further, they saw that there was a lesser lipid content in the mesocentric adipose tissue, but also the semitendinosus muscle. This is really interesting. The, not the muscle part so much, but the mesocentric adipose tissue because that is a type of visceral fat. So what this is suggesting is that through different mechanisms, perhaps palmitoleic acid could be playing a role in the reduction of visceral fat. What's wild is when you look more at the data, you realize that there was no change in subcutaneous fat. So, okay, so I don't want you to get the wrong idea. You're not going to just magically burn fat by taking in omega-7s or eating macadamia nuts. But it's kind of interesting, the fact that there was no change in subcutaneous fat. Because what that tells us is it wasn't just acting upon simple fatty acid utilization. It wasn't acting upon beta oxidation. It was acting directly upon complex gene pathways that directly impacted that mesenteric adipose tissue, that type of visceral fat. Okay, now that is very complex biochemistry that goes above my pay grade in terms of gene expression, but it's very fascinating stuff and I think it warrants a lot more research in that category with palmitoleic acid. Again, I kind of end this with the note that if the body creates it endogenously, it's probably pretty important. Therefore, it might not be a bad idea to get it in from the diet as well. So I stand behind macadamia nuts as my favorite nut. I'll see you tomorrow.